Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening service here at Great Vic. If this is your church home or you're just visiting with us this evening, you are very welcome. It is such a privilege always to gather like this to worship the Lord. The Lord does so much in our corporate gatherings. He preserves us, he nourishes us, he builds us up, he challenges us, he sharpens us, he does so many things just as we gather under his word. You are so welcome. Our evening this evening is a little bit different. Uh, we are in the midst of a week with a team from Northwoods Church in uh, Indiana, USA. Uh, they've been helping uh, by uh, moving around in the city and praying for different parts of the city. Yesterday, we're out in the streets doing some evangelism with us. And this morning, uh, we're involved uh, with our fellowship lunch. We heard a little bit from some of the team members. Um, but one of the main things we're going to do this evening in the midst of the service is just have an extended interview uh, with a few members of the team so that we can hear a little bit more about their lives. Uh, and then after that, I'll bring a short closing challenge this evening to us just about keeping the main thing the main thing as we grow as a church. That's really the plan for this evening. Uh, let me mention just a couple of announcements as we begin. Do make sure if you haven't already picked up a bulletin that you do pick one up before you leave. Uh, everything that's happening in the life of the church is in there in the bulletin. Uh, do remember for those in the 20s and 30s age range, uh, the supper club is meeting this evening. There's going to be a quiz night. Um, if you've been before or if you've never been, you'd be very welcome uh, just after the service to join the 20s and 30s for that evening. Then on Tuesday, for those of retirement age, we'll be having our friendship hour on Tuesday morning at the regular time. Again, if, you've, uh, if you haven't been to that and you're sort of interested in coming along, uh, you're very, very welcome. On Wednesday evening, our small groups will be gathering in the different parts of the city as we continue our studies uh, to the, uh, in Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Uh, and then remember, on Thursday evening, we're starting our evangelistic Bible study, Hope Explored. Uh, we've been praying about this. We've been encouraging people to invite uh, their unbelieving family and friends, those who are interested, or even just younger Christians who want to grow in their understanding of the gospel. We've been encouraging you to invite people along, and it is not too late to invite people to come to our first study on Thursday evening. Then the Abide, Abide Brunch then happens on Saturday the 2nd of March. Um, there's a sign-up sheet at the back for that. For any of the ladies that want to be part of the Abide Brunch, make sure you do get your name down on that this evening so that the, uh, those catering can be ready for that. And then finally, let me just remind you as a church that we're in the middle of a period for nominations for elders and deacons. We've again been encouraging you all as members to think about uh, who could be perhaps nominated uh, as being an elder or a deacon. That's everything for now. Um, for our call to worship this evening, I just wanted to draw our attention to these lovely, encouraging words from Psalm 145, verse 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Let's stand together and sing of the greatness of our God.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Spirit of the living God, one God, we bow before you together this evening and we recognize your holiness and your greatness and your majesty. Father, open our eyes more fully by your Spirit that we could appreciate more deeply your holiness. That we would recognize that you see everything in our lives. You have a right response to sin in your holiness. And that is that which is sinful is abhorrent to you. And you are full of wrath against sin. But Father, in love you have given us your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who bore your wrath for our sins on the cross and paid our debt so that we could be set free and brought out from under the clouds of condemnation to the place where in Christ we can say there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Father, what a relief it is to know your son, to be saved from sin, to be those who are adopted into your family by your spirit, that we can call you our father in heaven. And we want your name to be hallowed in our hearts and in our lives and across the nations. We want the nations to hallow and revere your holy name, our God. We want your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom press on forward into our hearts and lives. May you take ground in our lives and may you press on with the extension of your kingdom this evening here in our city and amongst the unreached peoples of this world. Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We're sorry for the wrong thoughts, the wrong words, the wrong attitudes. We're sorry, Lord, for the things we've done that have displeased you. We're sorry for all the ways we've left things undone that we should do, and this displeases you too. But Father, we thank you again for our Lord Jesus Christ, that in him our sin is never counted against us. We're clothed in his righteousness and we can have peace with you as we rest in Jesus. Help us to be a forgiving people who are gracious and compassionate, reflecting your grace and compassion. Lord, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. We pray this week that you would protect us from temptations, from wandering, from sin and snares. And we pray, Lord, that your name would be revered in our lives and in our hearts and in our attitudes throughout this week. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus, a hope that is being declared among all nations even this day. Thank you for your church across the world that has gathered in different places, and thank you for the different churches that have gathered across our city, Belfast, we continue to pray for the churches around us. We continue to pray for the work of the gospel going forth in different denominations, different churches where Christ is faithfully proclaimed. We just pray for fruitfulness. And among us too, Lord, we ask that you would bless us with continued fruitfulness and grace so that we would grow in the grace and in the knowledge of you, our Lord and Savior. Just help us, Lord. Draw us closer to you, we pray and help us to live in the goodness of the gospel. Day by day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Paddy's going to come now and read uh, two passages for us. Uh, the first is a psalm, Psalm 67, and the second is a passage that's well known to us, the Great Commission from Matthew 28. Thanks, Paddy. Psalm 
Psalm 67, starting at verse 1. To the choir master with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Selah. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Amen. Now we'll turn to Matthew 28 and we'll read verses 16 down to the end. Matthew 28, starting in verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Okay, if I can invite uh, our three members of the team uh, to come up, that would be wonderful. Kelly, Brad, and Larry. If you guys want to come forward and take a seat here, um, it'll be good to hear a little bit more about you. So... Feel very relaxed among us, okay? <laughs> um, I'll give this to you, Kelly, first. Can you, can you guys just each um, tell us uh, a little bit about uh, who you are, um, what you do now, or what you did with your life, if you are retired, in terms of job, and a little bit about um, how and when you became a Christian? I'm Brad Benefield. Uh, I've been doing engineering in the food and pharmaceutical range uh, for my career. I actually started off uh, right out of high school, joined the U.S. Navy, uh, and I was a submariner for 10 years. Uh, a lot of good training there, and that led me into more engineering after I got out. So I've done a lot of work in the bread industries, uh, dairy processing, and pharmaceutical processing. Um, and it's kept me very busy. I'm still working, usually about six days a week. Um, so I've got a full schedule. <laughs> it was great to have this week off to come and see you. Um, I prayed a uh, prayer of salvation at a camp called the Wilds in uh, the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, a good friend of mine from junior high school had asked me to go with him up there. And uh, I've been growing ever since. Wonderful. When you say submariner, do you mean on a submarine? Submarine. Okay, I just wanted to check that I was hearing that and understanding that correctly. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, who wants to go next? Kelly? Um, my name is Kelly Benefield. Um, again, it's wonderful to be here. Um, my career is in recruitment. Um, so I do a lot of consulting work. So I go into big organizations and teach them how to hire, uh, teach them how to interview, teach them how to be a little bit more process oriented. Um, I've been doing that pretty much all my career. Um, I'm in a, a wonderful place that the Lord has placed me right now where I'm working towards my biblical counseling um, certification and I'm just about done. So I'm segueing out of the secular world into biblical counseling and I'm just really excited about that and where the Lord is taking me. Um, 
my road to salvation was, was very different. I was not fortunate enough to grow up in a, a Christian home. Um, I grew up in a very strict Catholic home and uh, for many years felt there was something inside of me missing, but I didn't know what it was. Um, I think the one thing that we all learn is that when we, we have this hole inside of us and we want to fill it. So we try all these different things to fill it. Mine was my career and really growing in my career. And I felt after a while, it's not working. It's kind of like you go up to a machine and you're pushing all these buttons and nothing's coming out of the machine and you keep pushing more buttons and nothing's coming out. And I just was very stubborn. Um, and then the Lord just did an amazing thing. I was, I was you know, in my late 30s when I met the Lord, um, and he brought this, this wonderful man to me um, who was very persistent because in the beginning I just didn't want anything to do there. Um, he, <laughs> um, and, 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 the, and, and what's really wonderful and where you can really see the Lord work is that Brad used to be very shy. Notice I said the words used to be. Um, but the Lord gave him the ability to be very, very persistent. And through the Lord's working and through Brad and just through a lot of very patient people, um, I was able to learn the Bible and learn about Jesus. So I will tell all of you, if you have those family members, if you have those friends, really stick with them. Keep praying for them. God will, will work towards them. Um, Certain religions are very tough to break away from, and by having the support and the love of somebody to just keep breathing those words, um, it's just amazing. So I've, mm. I've been very, very blessed. Wonderful. And Larry? So my name is Larry Lovelace, and unlike Brad and Kelly, I'm from the south in, our, in a state called Arkansas, so I talk very slow, so forgive me of that. <laughs> These guys from up north, we, we have, a, have a thing in the United States where um, people from up north talk very fast, people from the south talk very slow. We like to just talk to people and get to know them a little bit. <laughs> However, I'm not going to do that because I was chastised by the team today that I talk too much, so I'm not going to talk as much. <laughs> so anyway, so as far as, as what I did in my career, so I actually, um, Steve alluded to it earlier today for those of you that were here, my wife and I, we owned uh, six McDonald's restaurants uh, before we retired. So God gave us the ability to, to do that, and, and uh, we're, we're so very thankful that... Uh, in, in many different ways for that. So that was my, they have cool careers. I, I, I made people eat and some pro unfortunately probably got a little heavy and hopefully they didn't, but that, that was kind of, that was kind of uh, what I did, but I'm very blessed to be able to do that. As far as my salvation story is concerned, um, I, was, I was brought up in a uh, Christian household uh, and I praise God for that. Uh, I was saved at age 11 uh, and I still, I was talking to someone about it today, actually, and for those of you that have, have, have experienced um, the Holy Spirit, just for, for me personally, it was just a gnawing at my heart that something was not right, and uh, we were in the middle of a revival, and uh, the, the pastor, his name was Gerald Mitchell, uh, he was a guest evangelist, and obviously coming from the South back, back when I grew up, uh, there was a lot of uh, hell and brimstone messages, and and that whole entire message, I was I was gripping not the pew in front of me, but the little you know we had the we didn't have the nice seats here. We had old benches, old wooden benches, and I was gripping that old wooden uh, benches where the hymnals dropped in, and uh, my dad was sitting next to me, and I said, Dad, I, I I've got to get something right with Jesus tonight because it's I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so I went up and uh, asked Jesus to be, as, as our lead pastor says, the boss of my life, uh, the Lord of my life. And uh, he, he saved me by his grace. I haven't lived a perfect life by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but for the grace of God, I'm here today, and I'm, I'm so very thankful to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. What would your go-to meal be at McDonald's today? <laughs> so that... There's really not a go-to meal, Steve. To be honest with you, when you when you work, I I love McDonald's food in all sincerity. I ate it for many years, 
And it, it, when, when my wife and I, and you may laugh at this, but this is a true story, when we owned our first restaurant, that's all we could afford, to be honest with you, because we, every penny that we had went into that. And so my wife will tell you she doesn't want McDonald's anymore, but I, I would eat it today, just whatever so right you want. right now you're at the counter, what do you order? Today, right now, a Big Mac meal. Big Mac, good Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Solid. Absolutely, just, you know, classic. Okay, classic. great, thank you. Now, Larry and Brad, it's my understanding that you're both elders at Northwoods. Would you mind just telling us a little bit about the church? Um, tell us a little bit about the, maybe the mission of the church, even just like numbers, age profile. Um, and and uh, would you say as elders you're encouraged at the moment? Yeah, thank, thank you for the question. So um, th the mission of our church, it, it's very simple. We actually just posted it on the, the wall right here. And then if, in case you missed it up here in service, it's on the wall right behind you when you're leaving, so you can't miss it. But it's, uh, it's disciples making disciples. Um, as, as followers of Jesus, we're his disciples and part of our responsibility, and it's just like you read on, on the Great Commission, like you just read just a few moments ago, you know, we're called to make disciples. We have no other purpose in our lives but to tell others about Jesus Christ. And that's something that's, that's I feel is completely embedded and continuing to grow and grow in our church. Um, our church started uh, back in 2002 as a church plant, like a lot of churches did. We don't have the, the long history that um, Great Vic has, but um, God has blessed us tremendously with a, uh, just like you have here with, with both uh, Steve and Simon, just a tremendous staff. Our we have a lead pastor, his name is Bobby Pell. Bobby was actually a church, church planter, and uh, for many years, we have an executive pastor whose name is Darren Garten. Darren was a church planter as well. And you kind of see the, the theme that I'm getting to with this. And uh, we have our missions pastor who was brought on board a few, mom a few years ago because, and he was actually supposed to be here tonight, but his, his wife was ill. Um, who was brought on board, who planted churches as well. So, and then we have two other pastors uh, on staff for youth as well as uh, for our music ministry, as well as several other staff members that do uh, various functions in the church. Uh, our church is continuing to grow. grow. God is blessing it. Uh, you know, we picked up well over 100 people this past year alone uh, in a normal attendance, uh, baptized many people, families joining. It's, it seems like almost weekly. And, uh, but it's just through the grace of God that that's happening because there's just such an enthusiasm in our church right now to um, make disciples. And so uh, our church right now is in the middle of a building project like um, Great Vic is, and uh, we're actually beginning construction on it in, in May of this year. So God has blessed us with the finances to be able to do that through the commitment of the members. And uh, we're, we're progressing because we, we have no space anymore. Uh, our typical Sunday service, we actually have to do two services on Sunday. And our typical Sunday service, we average uh, just the adults only in between five to 600 people, uh, which in the States is not a large, large church, but it's, it's a church that uh, is, is, it's not small either. Um, have fantastic youth kids program. As a matter of fact, a couple of the, the uh, folks on our team were talking about Puddles today, I think, is Puggles. Puggles. No idea, no idea, and that's unfortunate because when you're when you, your your church grows, you you miss some things, and so I've got to find out what Puggles is. Uh, Steve probably is fully aware of a Puggle, but uh, nope, not uh, at all. Okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, we're not, or I'm not. So anyway, so uh, yeah, so we do two services on Sundays, and like I said, the, our new new building is going to house around 775 to 800. Uh, uh, folks, and yeah, it's it's just such an exciting time at Northwoods right now, and I guess that leads into the second part of the question, are you excited? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I've, I've attended different churches over my uh, life, and I've never experienced anything as exciting as the time that we're in right now, mm -hmm. but it's just because of God and him, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit is in the building. And um, it's, it's such a, I wish everyone could come with us. Don't get me wrong, you've got a, 
Steve and Simon do a fantastic job here. I, I'm, and I'm going to shut up after this, but I, I, uh, I was sitting there today, and I, I grew up in the South, like I said, and I wanted to say amen so many times out loud, but I didn't know if it was appropriate to do that. So, uh, <laughs> such, such great messages from, from behind the pulpit today as well. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's mm. kind of a little bit about our church. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, Brad, you can tell us a little bit about the emphasis that Northwoods has on mission and evangelism. Um, you guys have been very kind as a church, even supporting Paddy for his training at Irish Baptist College and his work of doing a pastoral internship with a focus on evangelism here. What drives all that at Northwoods? What, how, you know, how have you seen this DNA with evangelism and missions right at the core grow over the years? Pretty much all we do, um, as Larry was saying, our mission statement is we're disciples, uh, we're a church of disciples who make disciples to make disciples. And all of our programs are, are geared to bring different groups together. Um, we do uh, every other Sunday evening, uh, a thing called The Gathering, and we've got, what, 30 tables? Yeah, 30 plus tables. And we'll have groups of about six. Um, and people will bring friends, and when the friends start coming back regularly, we'll split up and make more tables. We'll do a meal, and then we'll do a little bit of Bible study, and we'll do um, a lot of conversation, questions at the table, going over it. Um, mm. Kelly, with uh, the ACBC, which is the Biblical Counseling Group, they're starting a quite a counseling program within the church to counsel members and People from outside who will come in, and it's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we've got a lot of small groups where um, I just started a group with three other men where uh, every other week on Tuesday evenings, we're getting together and just going through a book on discipling and just being responsible to each other to help our growth along. And I think those... Those programs are, mm -hmm. you know, it's just really amazing, building each other up in a close relationship. And as far as uh, reaching out, uh, the people that we want to support, we want to start off building relationships with people in other areas and then support their missions. Um, we reach out to people where we can have that relationship with them and people that, you know, of course have... Uh, close lines with our theology. So, you know, we want to be able to build mutual support and build each other up. And it sounds like it's really, every member is really capturing this vision mm -hmm. of being responsible for this culture of making disciples. Would that be a fair statement? It would. We've probably, probably 30% or more of the, of the Congress, of the people that are on, uh, on the rolls are very active and serving and in one place or another. Yeah, yeah. We also have classes that we teach. Disciple class. We have disciple classes. Get the mic there. Yeah. The other thing that our church does that's really great is um, our pastors teach uh, two different classes. One is called discipleship, so it really teaches us how to disciple someone. And then we have another really great class um, about sharing the gospel. So for a lot of people, they're intimidated. It's difficult for them to do that. We hold these classes to get people excited and teach them different ways to be able to share the gospel. So we're constantly doing things that get us excited um, to, to want to go out and, and share God's word. Mm. And Kelly, while you have the mic there, I know you have developed more of a heart for ministry here in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about how the Lord has put our wee country on your heart? <laughs> well, first of all, it's, it's such a beautiful place. And you know, the Lord calls us to different places. And we always don't know why he does what he does. And we just follow him because that's why he's God and we're not. Um, our church does a lot of different missions. Um, and I've been at our current church for about two and a half years. And I've heard, been in the, you know, sitting where you all are and our pastor will get up, our missions pastor, as Larry said, that was supposed to be here. Uh, Ryan, he would talk about the team going to Ecuador. He would talk about the team going to Puerto Rico. I had a team going to Germany. And I love missions. I'm all about missions. I think that uh, it's something we all need to be doing. And, you know, I kept hearing these different things, and, and it was great, but it, it didn't move me. 
And then one day, um, our pastor, our lead pastor came back and said, you know, we just got back from a trip to Ireland. And just him saying it, like the Lord just, it, it, something just hit me and I'm like, Ireland. And I started thinking and then I started praying. And then they decided last May to put a small team of four people together um, it, to come out and just pray. So we literally, from the time we, uh, got on the airplane to the time we got back to the United States, we just prayed for Ireland. And the Lord opened so many doors. And while I was here, I met so many wonderful people. And those relationships stayed extremely strong. And you know how you go somewhere, you'll meet somebody and you'll exchange phone numbers and then you maybe talk to them once or twice? Um, that wasn't the case. Um, I can tell you in all honesty, I probably talk to people here in Ireland more than I talk to my family. Um, not this lovely gentleman here, but um, <laughs> so the strong relationship was built. And, and as these two were explaining, we are very blessed to be in a church that is very, very supportive of missions. And I went and spent a lot of time with our lead pastor and our mission pastor, and I said, the Lord is calling me to Ireland. And it's not just... I want to go once a year and evangelize. I want to create something. We, I feel our church has something that we can bring here, um, whether it's a discipleship program, whether it's biblical counseling. Um, I feel we can make a difference, and that difference is through the Lord. So the Lord has really uh, you know, pushed me, and it's just this strong commitment that I have. Um, when we were getting ready to leave to come, a uh, pastor came to the, to the airport to pray with us and send us off. And he said, you know, we're, we're building the, the, the team for Ecuador. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm working in Ireland. And I, I'm just, you know, so um, we also have had conversations where I've gone to our pastor and said, I really want to work to build out Ireland. I have a lot of ideas. And our pastor sat down and said, okay, you know, if you've got the ideas, let's build it. Um, as Brad was saying, we want to make sure it's the same theology. We want to make sure that the DNA matches. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we move forward with Patty, because Patty wants to go out, he wants to share the gospel, and he wants to be a church planner. And as Larry was saying, our pastors, our church, it's all about planting and growing. Um, so I'm looking forward to coming back. I'm looking forward to working with, you know, with Patty and with, with everyone here, Simon and, and with uh, Pastor Steve to, you know, here's some of my ideas. Here's what our church there is doing and how can we, you know, how can we grow this and, and, and make it a little bit more than what it is. So hmm. maybe just um, finally, maybe a little something from each of you. Um, we have so many church members who are just fully engaged in church yep. ministry serving in one way or another. I think you've probably seen it already, a little yep. bit of a taste of it over the past uh, few days. Um, some people, though, might be sort of feeling a wee bit on the margins and, yep. and wondering how they could get more involved. What would you encourage just, just local church members? Yep. How would you want to encourage them to just really give themselves to really getting stuck in, especially to evangelism and mission? I would tell you to be intentional. I know that we all get very busy. Um, and when I get busy, I try to stop and say, you know, Jesus was with us for a very short time, but he found the time to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. And aren't we really blessed that he did? He didn't say, I don't have time. If he said he didn't have time, you know, wow, where would we be? So I would say be intentional. Um, maybe you cut out that half hour TV show. Maybe you cut out 20, 30 minutes on the internet. Um, Make little index cards and carry them with you so you, you've got the word in front of you. Um, there's so many times during the day, whether you're at work or you're doing whatever, you can just pick up that card. So you want to keep the Lord close to you. The other thing that I would say that our church just finished doing, which was incredible, and I can actually send it to... to um, Pastor Steve, it, and I would encourage you to do it. it. It's a survey on spiritual gifts. And every one of us here has a spiritual gift, but a lot of times we don't know what that gift is. And you take this survey and it tells you what your spiritual gift is. It could be teaching, it could be evangelizing, it could be there's like a whole list of them. And when our church got together to do it as a group, we got really excited because we found out there were things that we didn't know we had that we actually had. And we're able to give those things to the church. 
Um, we're all members, as the Bible says. We, we all have to work together. You know, the foot can't work without the leg and the hand can't work. So we need all of you because each one of you has a different spiritual gift. Um, so if you have ideas, and I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, if you guys have ideas, I would bring them to Pastor Steve. Um, this is a congregation that works together. It's not we just come in and, and we leave and we leave it all up to the elders and up to the Dinkins because you guys have ideas too. So I would just get excited and share them. Um, I'll send that survey for you all to do. Um, and then I'm going to check in to make sure that you guys actually did it so we can see what your spiritual <laughs> gifts really are. Thanks, Kelly. Brad. And I would say um, just work together strengthen each other, um, get yourself in, you know, where you're feeling good in your lives, closer to Jesus, and then, uh, like you're doing, just invite others in and, and share that strength. Mm. That's, that's it. That's good. Thanks. Larry, anything to add? So, I would say pray. Pray what God wants you to do. Pray how God wants to lead you. Don't be afraid when you go out and talk to others about Jesus of rejection. We're all afraid of that sometimes. We have the greatest, greatest, greatest treasure to share. Share it. And I don't, I don't think there's anything else other than, than those things. Mm, yeah, wonderful. I'm just going to pray for you guys. Thank you very much for sharing a uh, little bit of your lives, a little bit of the uh, ministry at Northwoods with us. We're just so appreciative of you, of you being here. So let's just pray for these guys for a moment. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to hear a little bit more from Kelly, Brad, and Larry. Thank you for bringing them over here as part of this team uh, to help us with evangelism and just for them to experience a little bit more of the ministry we're involved in here in the city center of Belfast. Lord, just continue to help them uh, to grow and to walk with you more closely so that they would minister from the inside out, from that real place of authentic love for Jesus. And we pray that you'd help each of us here uh, to just, um, as Larry has said, just to, to draw near to you in prayer and that we would be intentional about uh, seeking to be uh, salt and light where you have placed us. We know sometimes it's difficult, Lord, among our families, among our colleagues, with our friends, but please just open doors for gospel opportunities and create in our midst in Great Vic uh, a real evangelistic culture within the church that each of us would uh, just bear that responsibility for being salt and light uh, for Jesus uh, in the spheres that we're in. So thank you for this uh, encouraging uh, report from these guys. We just pray you bless and keep them and the rest of the team throughout the rest of their time here and as they prepare to go back to the States later this incoming week. Uh, and continue to encourage us throughout this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can take your seats. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we're going to stand again and just sing, uh, Shine Jesus Shine, uh, before uh, we look at God's word for just a few moments before we close. Thanks, guys.
Great. I haven't sung that song in years. I forgot how good it actually is. It's wonderful. Well, if you have your Bible, please just open with me or uh, just swipe open on your phone there to Matthew chapter 28, uh, the second passage that Patty read for us earlier. I don't want to keep us long this evening, but I do want to bring a closing challenge and a closing encouragement to help us reflect a little bit more on something of what we've just heard uh, from the team members this evening. I want to just briefly draw our attention to the clearest statement that Jesus makes in the Bible about the mission of the church. This is our mission that Jesus has left for us to be involved in. Verse 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We wanted this evening to just be a reminder for us all of the importance of keeping the main thing the main thing in our life as a church family. The reason that we need to keep reminding ourselves of keeping the main thing the main thing is because we're getting very busy as a church. And I mean busy with the number of ministries we're doing and involved in. So just this past week, since Wednesday passed, Wednesday we had our midweek prayer meeting here at the church, Thursday morning, Tots and Tinies. Saturday morning, we had a men's breakfast gathering, which was really encouraging. In the afternoon on Saturday, street evangelism out the front of the church, just talking to passers-by in the city about the hope we have in Christ. Today, we've had our morning service, a fellowship lunch, an evening service, 20s and 30s gathering after this evening. Friendship hour on Tuesday, small groups on Wednesday, hope explored on Thursday. That's just a week. We're doing lots of good things, but it's really important that we keep our focus and remember continually why we do all we do and how we want every single element and activity to pour into this one single aim. What is the main thing that we are to keep as the main thing here at Great Vic and in our lives individually as Christians? The call to make disciples. Everything we do at Great Vic, we want it to be driven by the mission Jesus gives us here in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. I like to summarize this passage in two sections. We see the Great Commission and the Great Commitment. The Great Commission starts there in verse 18 with this signpost to the authority of Jesus Christ our Lord and his calling to his people to go and to make disciples of all nations. The focus of his command is found in these two words, make disciples. And remember, these are Jesus' last words before he ascends back to the Father. He wants this to be ringing in our ears, so to speak, as he ascends to the Father and sends his people on their mission. Make disciples. That is call people everywhere to bring every element of their lives under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus in saying make disciples is saying go and call people to follow me as Lord and Savior. The supporting verbs in the Great Commission tell us what this work of making disciples involves. Three things, going, baptizing, and teaching. It's crystal clear. Here is the work of making disciples. First, going. 
we carry with us an attitude where we want to get out into the world and speak to people about Jesus. We don't want to hide our light under a bowl. We don't want to be salt that stays in the salt shaker. Have you ever had one of those wee clogged salt shakers? And you go to shake the salt out, but it's clogged and it doesn't come out. We don't want to be like that. We're to get out of that salt shaker and into the world, to quote the title of Rebecca Manley Pippert's book. That's why we do, for example, Hope Explored. That's why we encourage us all to be inviting people along. It's why we share the gospel with the children of the fellowship as they grow up. It's why we have bounce that Jenna was speaking about over our fellowship lunch today. It's why we're sending a team to Albania, and Julio's here tonight, and he would be very happy to talk to you about being part of that team that's going to Albania in the summer. This is why we have gatherings each month on Saturday evenings for Ukrainians. And I don't know if you've heard yet, but at the last Ukrainian gathering, someone became a Christian. Going is a fundamental part of being a disciple. And it doesn't mean you need to cross cultures necessarily in today's world to reach people from different people groups, different countries and different nations. Just yesterday on the street, I met someone who was from northern India, and I'm not sure if he understood me or not, but when I asked him, do you know anything about Jesus, he said no. And I said, let me tell you about him. Someone from northern India, I had the chance yesterday to tell him about Jesus. It's just wonderful. That's right on the doorstep of our church. But for you, it could be just your neighbors trying to think, how could I reach my neighbors? Could we hold a wee gathering at Christmas or at Easter and invite some people in for coffee? Could we, how could I connect with my colleagues? And I know it can be so hard. Sometimes you're so busy at work, you don't have a moment or an opportunity in weeks to share the gospel with people. It's, you just can't see it coming anywhere. But just again, as we've said before here at Great Vic, never underestimate the steady power of a quiet, faithful witness at work. Just over the long term, the way you work, the manner in which you work, your kindness, your grace, your patience. Being disciples involves going. That is carrying an attitude that intentionally wants to get out and be salt and light in our world for Jesus. It's thinking that way and trying not to forget that this is our fundamental mission and part of making disciples. That work of making disciples also involves Baptizing. Now, there's a lot encapsulated in the word baptizing in the Great Commission. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This involves the whole process of preaching the gospel, seeing people converted, then baptized, the outward expression of the inward change that has happened, and welcoming those people into the new covenant community, and into local church membership. This word gives us our goal in going and proclaiming the good news to people, and that goal is conversion. We know that people need to be born again. They need to be made alive where they are by nature spiritually dead. When God works through the word of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, something deep and supernatural can happen within the human heart. God can create new spiritual life where there is no spiritual life. He does that through the preaching of the gospel. The next step after someone experiencing this heart transformation being converted is that they are baptized. We literally do this at Great Vic. We take out the tank and we immerse people in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to show they've died to their old way of living for self and they've risen up to newness of life in Christ, having all their sins washed away by faith alone in Christ alone. And then the next step for a baptized believer is to come into membership in a local church, to live out their membership in Christ's universal church in a local church. 
That's God's good design for how he builds his church and makes disciples. All of that included in that word, baptizing. And then in the context of the local church, Jesus gives us the third part of what discipleship making means. Disciple making means. It involves going. It involves preaching the gospel, seeing people saved, baptized, joined to the local church. And then when they're in that local church community, we are teaching them to observe all that Jesus has commanded us. This third element of making disciples shows that Jesus has a lot more in mind than just initial evangelism and response. Jesus wants mature, obedient disciples, not just quick, superficial decisions. This shows that a vital part of fulfilling the Great Commission involves seeing people who are saved plugged into local churches, God's growth centers for disciples, where they can be taught, notice, everything I have commanded you to live under the lordship of Jesus Christ, to bring their whole lives under the lordship of Jesus Christ. This involves preaching, good, expositional, faithful, Christ-centered preaching in local churches. It involves our midweeks, our Bible studies. This work of discipling involves mentoring. It involves modeling the Christian life to those believers who are younger than us. It involves men mentoring men, women mentoring women, as Paul wrote and taught uh, Titus. This is why we had our men's breakfast on Saturday and discussed pursuing Purity, it's why the abide ladies gather. It involves fellowship, care for each other, mutual encouragement, edification. The 20s and 30s don't just gather together to gather together. They're creating a space for fellowship and encouragement. This is why Friendship Hour will gather on Tuesday morning. It's why following God together takes seriously proclaiming the gospel and discipling those with special needs. Well, part of all of this creating the growth center of the local church Involves office bearers meetings and elders meetings so that we can make sure we're doing things decently and in order and always working to keep the main thing the main thing. We're not primarily a social hub, a community hub. We're not primarily here to do social action. We're not even here primarily to stand up for ethical matters, though these are all good things that we want to be involved in. But other groups in the city can do all of these things. What's the one thing we do that other groups don't do? We are the people proclaiming eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No one else will do it but the church. That's what we're about. So what is the mission of the church? Summarized beautifully in the mission statement of Northwoods Church. Making disciples who make disciples. This is our Mission is all of our mission. Keeping the main thing, the main thing at Great Vic will mean we are serious about making disciples. That is going, preaching the gospel, witnessing to what God has done in our lives, declaring the excellencies of our great God who has saved us in order to see people converted baptized, becoming members of the local church, and the church growing and maturing in every generation. I said that this passage, though, involves two things, not just the great commission, but also the great commitment. And with this, I'll finish. Isn't it lovely that Jesus included the great commitment after the great commission? It's at the end there of verse 20. And behold, now that and behold means just stop for a moment and take it in, in this work that I'm leaving for you, making disciples, going, baptizing, teaching, in this work, behold, I am with you. I'm not leaving you on your own. 
I am with you. Now, Jesus was ascending back to the Father, so he's clearly speaking of the giving of the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ to fill and empower the church in their mission in the world. I am with you always to the end of the age. And you know, that glorious statement actually bookends the whole of the Gospel of Matthew. Do you remember how Matthew chapter 1 opens with these two beautiful names for Jesus? He'll be called Jesus because he'll save his people from their sins, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The book opens with this beautiful statement, Jesus, God with us, and it closes, God with us. That's so satisfying. That's so encouraging. As we continue the work of making disciples in every age, and think about it, the earliest records we have for Great Vic are, it's debatable, 1810, 1811. And down through the years, a community making disciples in the city center to the glory of God. And here we are now, having received the baton from those who have gone before us, and we have this incredible responsibility, privilege, and opportunity to run faithfully the stage we're at, to continue this great work of making disciples who make disciples until Christ returns. Our mission statement at Great Vic is that we exist to glorify God by enjoying and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are all evangelists of the things we enjoy. And so we are calling us to be a people who go deep in our pursuit of God to pursue joy in God. And that overflowing out of that joy that we have in God, we will share that joy with others. God is with us. Christ is with us by his spirit as we go into this week. Take this into this week ahead. I know some of you are going into busy weeks where again just work is flat out. Every day is flat out and you hardly get to lift your head for a moment. Christ goes with us into tomorrow morning as we seek to be faithful witnesses, salt and light, just where he's placed us at work, just where he's placed us on our street, just where he's placed us among our family and friends. A simple mission. Go and make disciples. Great Vic, let's always keep the main thing the main thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to reflect again on the commission that your Son has given us in the power of the Spirit. Father, help us at Great Vic to always keep the main thing the main thing. And I pray that you would teach us each how to play our part in the great commission that you have given to us. And that where we feel particularly weak, and we feel probably a bit rubbish sometimes because of how weak our witness is, help us again not to look within ultimately for the strength we need to grow as faithful disciples who make disciples, but help us to look outside of ourselves again to Jesus and to the strength and power of the Spirit. All the resources we need to live faithful lives are given to us because we have the Spirit. And so we pray that you would fill us up this week, that we'd go out in the strength that you provide, knowing that through our work and our witness that you can do great things. And we pray that you would open doors so that we would have more opportunities to speak of Christ in the week ahead with people, that we could share the hope that we have and the knowledge we have of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and of the goodness of living life, our lives under the Lordship of Christ. I pray you just help us with this more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's respond by standing to sing of the precious name of Jesus.
together. Father, thank you for the precious name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your patience and grace towards us. Strengthen us, we pray, that we would be faithful witnesses for your name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.